everybody. Today we are going to be working on uh, making a box plot for um, our data in Stata. So let's go ahead and get started. I hope you find this uh, tutorial useful for your purposes today. So let's go ahead and open Stata. I'm going to open a data set that I like working with. You can use whatever data set that you would like. The reason I like this data set is as you can see by the variables over here, um, they lend their way to a lot of questions. And um, at the end of the day, I mean, isn't that what data is for, is to you know, be able to answer and ask different questions um, about you know, the progress of disease or just even human behavior. Um, so I'm gonna use this data set and uh, just show you some basic functions here. So let's say I wanna make just a very basic graph plot or, or uh, some people call it a, um, Sorry, a box and whisker plot or box plot or whatever you call it. So first thing you want to do is you want to tell Stata in the command center that you're going to create a graph. And specifically, you want a box plot. And you want that box plot to be of this variable. I'm going to go with uh, numbers of hours worked last week. So I type that in in the command center and press enter. And it takes a little, little bit of time. And then voila, you have a box plot of the hours of the number of hours worked last week. So you can see you have your quartiles, you have these outliers here, you have your um, your median or your mean, and um, you know you can get some useful data from this. But you know I, I'm, I'm a type of person, I like a horizontal box plot. Lucky for me it is actually quite simple. I just instead of typing box I type H box for horizontal and go with the variable. And look at that, I have uh, the same graph, but now it is horizontal, and I, you know, I find that easier to read. So this is a pretty basic plot. You probably have more questions. Maybe it's a simple question like, you know, is there a difference in the genders between the number of hours worked last week? Um, so I do the same thing: graph h box. I'm going to stick with the horizontal hours one, but this time I put a comma and I write over sex. So this over here is the main command, and then after the comma comes different options about the command. So basically, my option here is that I want you to create two different um, graphs, uh, one for male and one for female. So let's do that. And so you can see that it automatically did that, and it's quite beautiful. And there is a slight difference. We don't know if it's statistically significant. If we want to, we can go into uh, do a contingency table and a chi-square, but that is a different video for a different day, so I will just close this up. So now, maybe I'm wondering only about uh, females, right? So I'm telling Stata now, make a graph. I want it to be a horizontal box of the hours one, and only include data if the sex equals two. So you have to put that double equals. And um, I made an assumption that it was coded as one as male, two as female. I could, I could be wrong, but let's just, let's just roll with it. And there we go. So we have a uh, box plot of only females. And this is the number of hours worked last week. That's pretty interesting. So maybe now I'm thinking, uh, well, does the number of hours work is it different depending on someone's, let's say, marital status, right? So I'm gonna, just for fun, I'm gonna only include females on this one, equals two. So graph h box plot hours one if sex equals two over marital. So now I'm gonna, let's see. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna have so many updates for you guys here. So now I'm going to get a whole bunch of different box plots depending on the person's marital status. So here you can see, you know, there, there are definitely differences between these different categories and you could hypothesize where those differences come from, maybe they need to be um, adjusted for by age, especially considering that widowed is so, is so much less. Um, we would do that here, but as you can see, age was not one of the variables that they collected data on. So let's go ahead and close this up. So that was pretty interesting. Let's actually, let's see if we can get males in on that too. So this time I'm going to do h box plot hours one, and I'm going to put over sex and over marital. 
So this is a pretty nifty chart here with a lot of data. So you can see for the married category, I have both male and female um, data. And uh, same for widowed, so on and so forth. So let's say you're thinking, okay, well, this is the this is the data I need to present for um, you know whatever reason, but it's not exactly visually appealing in the way that I want it to be, or it doesn't go with kind of the theme of the paper. So um, you can go into either edit up here, or I like this little button here, start graph editor, and now you're able to edit different aspects of the graph. So let's start with the basic, you know, I, I'm gonna like this color back here. So I'm gonna click into this color, and you can see this option generates, and right now it's a light bluish gray, and let's say, let's try, um, you know, we'll go, let's do pink. Oh, yikes, okay, well, you can use this if it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month, but let's do something a little, let's do, um, we'll do a dark orange. Yeah, I like this, it's our UT colors here, right? So I just changed the background to a dark orange, and now I'm thinking this blue doesn't work, so I can click right in there, and same thing, that a color generates and I can choose a different one. Um, these lovely different grayscales can be really useful for you, um, if especially a lot of papers are meant to be printed in black and white. So I'll do that. Oh, that's a little light. A little counterintuitive because for the grayscale, the higher the number, the lighter it is, which uh, to me does seem counterintuitive. And you can change these, these dots here too to match that. Maybe I want that to be just basically black. And there you go, it's a pretty pretty good looking graph there. Um, you can also change the size of the labels. Maybe I want this to be medium small, or you can change the angle. Um, you can do, let's do vertical. Well, that's not very useful, so let's try. I like doing it at an angle. Yeah, see, that's that's nice looking, nice looking graph there. Um, so you have the, all those options, and um, you can even, you know, work with some of these some of these tools in here. I'm going to click out actually, um, and you can see you can add text. The interesting thing about the text is you can add it anywhere on the screen. So if I want to add it right here, I can say interesting. I, I don't think anyone put that on the graph, but I just say interesting a lot. So uh, another useful thing to know is the difference between OK and Apply. So when you click Apply you can see that your whatever modification you're making is applied but it does not close this you know box but let's say I want to close the box this is inter interesting and I click OK and you can see that now that closes the box so you know it's just a, a slight thing and you probably would learn that just working with it but um, you know it's always good to know um, you can rename the graph, and you know you can you can play with some up here. I like the titles as well. Um, so let's say we can do number of hours worked by marital status and sex, and you can see I pl I clicked OK. So it just oops. Let's just skip that for now. You're you're seeing how this is. I can. I can edit that, but I'm just going to leave it for now because I think you're getting that. So another useful thing is the scale and the aspect ratio, which kind of just changes how the overall um, ratio inside the graph look. So just to give you a, 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 an idea, if I change the scale to something crazy like 5, it makes the, the words insanely big and the actual graph very small. So let's go to 2. And you can see again, it's kind of squished. So I like to actually keep it really, um, really small. I like to do some decimals. Let's do 0.5. Mm. Maybe let's do a 0.75. I keep right clicking by mistake. 0.75. There you go. So maybe you find that a little bit easier to read, and it kind of focuses on the data a little bit more. You can also say, hey, you know, I want to um, add some grid lines to this. Where am I? Grid? I keep on the side. Oh yeah, it's asking me to put some text. But you can, you know, um, add the title here. Here's a title. Put it up there. So you have a lot of different um, options with this um, with this data editor. So let's close it out. Let's close out our beautiful graph. We could save it, but we're we're not going to save it. 
because I also want to show you how to create a box plot um, in a slightly different way. So now you can actually go up to graphics, click box plot, and it's, you know, you can create the same thing, but this is just a different option. So let's say you want to go horizontal, you want it, you want the variables to be hours one. And the same thing, like I said, apply and okay, as before, submit means create it, but I'm not done. And then okay means create it and I'm done. So um, that's a, a useful difference to know. So let's do this time. Now we want to do the if in. So maybe we just want to say if sex equals two, just like we did last time. Let's click submit. It's going to show us that graph. Maybe we want to do, we'll go back to uh, categories, right? We want to do it by uh, marital status. So we can submit. And there you go. So you're getting the idea that basically you can do the same stuff that we did in the command center, but with using the drop-down menus. I personally prefer the command center just because I find it um, a little bit easier to work with, but that is a personal preference. Anything that you find useful is what you should do because um, it is, it's your data, your work. So I hope you found uh, today's tutorial helpful and uh, be on the lookout for um, a couple more coming your way. Have a good one.